This is a gift to the channel from WD9HFT. This is an aircraft converter, and I'm not really sure what it converts aircraft into, but what this thing is supposed to do, and you can tell kind of it by looking at the box that it's old, um, this takes VHF airband signals and converts them into AM radio signals so that you can listen to the airband in your car uh, well, I guess with any AM radio. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing built and then we will be able to take it out and try and tune in to airband. I'm going to take it over to one of the local airports here and see if I can pick up on any air traffic. I'm going to see if I can get any at the house. We do have some uh, local air traffic that flies over the house here, but not a whole heck of a lot. So I'm going to see if I can get some over at the uh, airport. So first off, it's in a, it's in a plastic case pop that open. There's a nice little card for hanging it on the shelf. This was made in Brooklyn, New York by ICO Electronic Instrument Company Inc. which seems like it's kind of redundant. EICO is the acronym for Electronic Instrument Company Inc. and so they call themselves ICO Electronic Instrument Company Inc. We got a bag full of parts. We've got a nice little side rider to assemble to make it look kind of professional. A nice piece of foam for packing material and circuit board. This is a very straightforward circuit board. There's not really a whole heck of a lot of stuff going on here. Exposed copper traces on the back, silk screen on the front, and these really aren't even vias. These are just holes um, on modern circuit boards. The uh, let's zoom in on this so I can show it to you a little better. Focus in. Where's my focus? Too much. Hey, here we go. There's a little bit of focus. Okay, so on modern circuit boards, they will have the the metal come all the way through the board and pop out so that it is metal on the top surface of the board in the in the donut hole in the center and then connects to the the back side. So this is going to be interesting to solder. I've got my soldering iron set at the usual 640. I've got my usual array of soldering goodness. Zoom back out, and uh, got a different kind of lighting setup here. I don't know if it's going to be better or worse, but we will give it a shot and see what happens. And uh, not a whole lot of parts to go on here either. So there's the circuit board, there's the components, some instructions, and an envelope for a very, very special piece. Let's see what's inside here. A, a transistor that looks like an old spaceship. It's just a little round hat on top of the transistor. So we will set that carefully off to the side. All right, first order of business is to read some documentation. You may receive either of the PC board listed in the following models. And really, thank you for letting me know. Um, this is the 82657 model. And this is, what What model number is this? This is the EC2800. So we will look at EC2800 and I could get either the 82640 or the 82657 and I got the 82657. And honestly, I don't know why that matters yet, but they told me for a reason, I guess. Put that back in the box. Solid state electronic VHF converters. Okay, so the 2700 is 30 to 50 megahertz, the 2800 is 108 to 136 megahertz, and the 2900 is the 150 to 174 megahertz, and this is the 2800. Important, parts may differ slightly. Okay, observe polarity, transistor lead identification, and it's telling you a little bit about that. So what do we, what do we say about that? The arrangement of the emitter, base, and collector leads in transistor Q1 used in this IcoCraft kit is shown in figure 1, which is this figure. Is it really? Yes, it really is. Um, as a further guide, the transistor may also be stamped with the letters E, B, and C next to the associated leads. Be sure to connect these leads correctly. The converter will not operate if the transistor is improperly connected. So, there is a little flat side of the transistor, which is 
impossible to see on the camera, but right there, and there's a lead up close to that, which is the emitter on that side, and the base on that side, and the collector on that side. So, good to know. And it has a little checklist here, and you can you can smell the, the old paper. Little checklist here for what to do. Hmm. <laughs> step one, followed by step twelve. A little bit of a typo there. That's step two. And step one, I mean, the, the instructions are really good for a brand new uh, kit builder. Step one, orient the printed circuit board with the printed side up and the copper foil side down. Okay. And then once you put the brackets on right away, that's interesting. Okay, we'll put the brackets on right away. Secure the PC board to the brackets as shown in figure two, which is there. Great, let's, uh, let's get rolling on that. I'm gonna separate the parts out because that's a better step one for me. Open up the parts bag. We've got some, some chunky parts here. All right, you have seen people sort parts before. You probably even sorted parts before yourself, so I'm gonna speed right on through this part here. The first step they wanted you to do was put these side brackets on the circuit board. I don't know if this was a good idea or a bad idea, but I made it work. I figured I'd try something different and see if it was good, bad, or indifferent. And it was kind of indifferent. Putting the resistors on here, and basically this is my good old-fashioned strategy of let's just run out of parts. And without the usual modern solder mask on this thing, you could just put solder on this until you ran out of solder. So you kind of just blob it up and it, it's kind of what it is. There's nothing to stop it to make it look pretty, it just is what it is. And I'm trying to figure out what capacitors to put on because they go next. And the writing on these capacitors was not normal. I had to break out a different meter, I had to check their values. I think they gave me six out of seven capacitors and two of the capacitors didn't match themselves even though they had the same values inside, so skip it. We'll just take care of the low-hanging fruit, get the easier stuff. So I moved on to putting on the coils and all the other parts. This was an air variable capacitor, and I was trying to figure out which way to put it on. This is what you use for fine-tuning the output AM frequency. And I really, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters which direction you put it on. And they had some really good instructions for how to get the transistor sorted out as to which way it goes in, so I followed those directions, got that done. And for this battery lead, I decided to put it on the underside just to make it look pretty. And here's another problem. The antenna wire that this thing shipped with, first off, they want two 12-inch antennas, and they only gave me one 12-inch wire. And second, something happened to it, and you just couldn't solder to it at all. We'll fix that a little bit later back to those capacitors. So I just took a while and raided my parts bin and found capacitors that I thought might work. Tried to decode the values, tried to figure it out. Whatever works, works at the end of the day. So there's a mix of some old capacitors, some new capacitors, some axial capacitors, some tantalum capacitors, and some ceramic disc caps. I find that drawing this grid out on the paper and taping the parts down makes it really easy to figure out what is what and very quickly glance at them. Like, do all the hard to see stuff up front, and there you go. 
And this is some of that fabulous DX10 wire from DX Commander. And this is actually still leftover wire from when I made my DX Commander all band vertical. And it was a little too big for the holes here, so we'll get that fixed with a little uh, improvisation, if you will. And that's all done, and here's the beauty shot. Okay, the IcoCraft aircraft converter unit. I don't know why they went through the trouble of putting these uh, little plastic frames on the side to dress it up a bit, to make it look more like a panel mount device when it has no top case and no bottom case and a bunch of antennas flopping off of it. But it was a kit and it was pretty interesting to build. And um, it's really interesting to note how the older kits went together compared to how the newer kits went together, the advances in circuit board manufacturing and things along those lines. Um, I don't think that they got all the parts right. I had a little bit of trouble with the capacitors. First off, they're really low value capacitors like one picofarad and two picofarad and stuff like that, which I did not have in my parts bin. But we got her put together. I did have to uh, talk to Lord Callum and get the proper antenna wire. Nothing but DX Commander DX10 wire here. Um, would I get another one of these kits? Probably. As long as I had parts on hand to replace some of the parts that didn't work out all that well. If you have tuning issues, they tell you to take the coil here and spread it out or compress it down to do a little bit of fine tuning with it. But overall, it was a fun project to do. Uh, outside of trying to source the appropriate replacement capacitors, it was fairly easy and fairly straightforward, and uh, it was fun. So, that's the aircraft converter. Thanks for being awesome.